this is going to be part two of the introduction to sim room from try hack me and we're going to be exploring why do we need a sim why exactly do we need a sim what's the point of a sim 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 everything sim so why is there a sim and also actually getting our hands dirty with some sim work advice to get in alerts or looking through some logs so let's get right into it all right so why sim big question right so a sim is used to provide correlation on the collected data to detect threats once a threat is detected or a certain threshold is crossed an alert is raised and this alert enables the analysts to take suitable action based on the investigation the sim plays an important role in the cybersecurity domain and helps detect and protect against the latest threats in a timely manner. Provides good visibility of what's happening within the network infrastructure. SIM capabilities. Now, SIM is one of the major components of a security operations center ecosystem, as illustrated below. The SIM starts by collecting logs and examining if any event flow has matched the condition set in the role or crossed a certain threshold. And it's really cool. I like the way it's termed, and I, I hope in the future we could actually go on a video where we actually look at actually creating detection rules with something like Sigma and look at you know what they mean by conditions and thresholds. But it'd be really cool to kind of go through that let's go on and continue with the sim capabilities some some of the common capabilities of sim are correlation between events from different log sources by the way if you've not watched the first part of this video i definitely recommend checking it out because that gives you the basics the foundational stuff about you know network visibility you know what exactly a sim is and also some log source and log ingestion basics but yeah the sim gives you correlation between different events from different log sources and it provides visibility on both host centric and network centric of activities if you're not familiar with what a host centric activity of uh, or what a network centric activity is i definitely recommend checking out the first video once again uh, because it breaks down you know what kind of data can you get from a host and what kind of data can you get from the network and then next it also allows analysts to investigate the latest threats and timely responses i guess it's meant to say invest the latest threats and you know have timely responses and finally it lets you hunt for threats that are not detected by the rules in place now this is actually really cool because there's a subset or domain within cybersecurity and security operations called threat hunting where you actually go look for indicators of attackers malicious activity if it wasn't detected by your threat detection system or it wasn't prevented by your prevention system and we can see here there's a diagram showing you sort of a you know a, a cycle of things that happen within the security operations centers well first you have the log collection you have the knowledge base you have research and development probably where you do some research into like how you know threats happen and how you can actually feed that back into your sim you know sort of what i was doing in my past role while i was doing research into attacker behaviors and i fit him back that research into detecting rules for the sim next you have the aggregation and correlation is probably where like you kind of look at you know the different things the different data points and how they can be brought together to create a story or how they can be correlated if they're in disparate sources or if they're different and you know brought together to create a story about what exactly happened within an attack and next you have threat intelligence so this is basically leveraging what you know about what attackers are doing or what attackers may potentially do and applying that into your sim let's say through like ip reputations or or even through domain reputation, whatever the case is, different things fall under the category of threat intelligence. Next, you have you know the sim itself, then reporting, and then ticketing. Now let's look at some SUC analyst res responsibilities. The SUC analyst utilizes sim solutions in order to have better visibility of what is happening within the network. Some of their responsibilities include monitoring and investigating, identifying false positives, tuning rules which are causing the noise or false positives, reporting and compliance, identifying blind spots in the network visibility, and covering them. So for the first line of defense within monitoring and investigating you're looking at what did the attacker try to do right did they were they actually able to get access were they doing some reconnaissance like what exactly happened that's like first line of defense you're kind of triaging it's called triage sometimes and then next you have identifying false positives so with identifying false positives they're looking at why did this thing trigger when it wasn't supposed to trigger right a false positive basically is an alert that incorrectly indicates that a vulnerability or attack is currently going on right so you see this a lot in socks where analysts complain a lot about like false positives which which is sometimes inevitable but it's sort of part of the responsibilities of the analysts as well as detection engineers to work towards reducing the amount of false positives that might exist within the sim so how do we actually create higher fidelity alerts to make sure that our sim is working as a shoot and it's only detecting on things that we wanted to detect and not causing a bunch of noise by generating a bunch of alerts based off of things that might be benign and things we don't really care to take a look at. Next you have some reporting and compliance. Sometimes having a sim is part of you know some compliance regulations or whatever the case is. And the final responsibility was identifying blind spots in the network visibility and covering them. So as a SOC analyst, if you're investigating something and you realize, oh, I don't have access to this data source, this data source doesn't exist within the sim, right? This you 
know, network visibility that I need to complete my investigation or to make this investigation process a lot more holistic doesn't exist, then, you know, it's your responsibility to surface that to the engineers or if it's, you know, if you, it's also your responsibility, you know, to actually configure the sim to actually look for ways to ingest those data sources to ensure that you have a holistic view of your network, you know, your environment, making sure that you're not, you know, having blind spots and stuff like that. Now let's look at what it takes to analyze logs and alerts. Sim tools get all the security related logs ingested through agents, port forwarding, and so on. Once the logs are ingested, Sim looks for unwanted behaviors or suspicious patterns within the logs with the help of conditions set in the rules by analysts or engineers. Like I said earlier on, it would be cool to do a room on like Sigma where we go over, you know, what a condition is and what the threshold is and how it pertains to creating detection rules within a sim. But let's get back into it. If the condition is met, a rule gets triggered and the incident is investigated. Dashboards. Dashboards. Oh my goodness. I love dashboards. I made so many dashboards. Well, I... I have, I love, okay, I love dashboard like 80%. I hate dashboards like 20%. I spent a lot of time just building a bunch of security dashboards. Like it's like one of my favorite things to do, but also one of my least favorite things to do. But they're really fun. Like actually creating a visual overview to help you kind of get a holistic picture of something like an IP address or a user or whatever the case is. I love dashboards. Like they're one of my favorite things to do like security wise, but also some of, one of my least favorite things to do. It's kind of like an 80% love, 20% hate sort of relationship with dashboards for me. But dashboards are the most important components of any sim. That's a bit subjective. I would say probably the most important component of your sim is your detection rules because yeah, I personally think that's that's the most important thing. But it says they're the most important thing. So I mean, I don't believe that, but I think detection rules are more important. Sim presents the data for analysis after being normalized and ingested. The summary of these analysis is presented in the form of actionable insights with the help of multiple dashboards. Each sim solution comes with some default dashboards and provides an option for custom dashboard creation. And some of the information that can be found in the dashboard are alert highlights, system notification, health alerts, a list of failed login attempts, events ingested count, rules triggered, and top domains visited. Now this is a very, very limited list, but some other things that you might find right in a dashboard could be, you know, stuff like commonality of an IP addresses. If is it, is it a very common IP address within your environment? Is it a very rare IP address in your environment? About event names, right? Event names, is it a very common event name? Is it a, a, you know, a less common event name? Or you can also have things like in the dashboard, you can have time series about user activity over a certain period of time, right? Where you can see like, okay, this user did a lot of things within this amount of time and then they didn't do anything here. Or you could also look at like, you know, network activity, right? So how much network activity is occurring, let's say from this particular endpoint, if you specify that endpoint within your search in the dashboard and be like, oh, okay, this this endpoint is, has been accessing X domain over a certain amount of time. Like there's so much you can do with dashboards. The possibilities are endless. Like it's one of the coolest things that, you know, we as detection engineers do, or, you know, people who work within Sims do, because it's, it's fun. You, you just get to do a lot of things with, with, with a dashboard. And here you have an example of a dashboard. This is, I believe, a uh, IBM Q radar. You can see a bunch of things here, but yeah, dashboards are cool. Correlation rules. Correlation rules play an important role in the timely detection of threats, allowing analysts to take action on time. Correlation rules are pretty much logical expressions set to be triggered. A few examples of correlation rules are if a user gets five failed login attempts in 10 seconds, raise an alert for multiple failed logins. If another one could be if login is successful after multiple failed login attempts, raise an alert for successful login after multiple login attempts. Another one is also a rule can be set to alert every time a user plugs in a USB, especially if the USB is restricted as part of the company policy. Finally, you could also set a rule for something like if outbound traffic is over 25 megabytes, raise an alert alert to potential data exfiltration attempts. This usually depends on the company policy. Now, this is called a correlation rule here. Well, it's some in some ways, it's a correlation rule, but this is, you know, in some cases, this is actually just a basic detection rule looking for like, you know, maybe password spraying or like credential stuffing. Some more advanced correlation rules could have like a bunch of logic, right? So let's say you work in an environment where you actually are very familiar and intimate with that environment. You can create correlation rules to be like, if, for example, right, let's say you, you did a penetration test with the environment, you know, your red team or your penetration test has told you this is actually an attack path that could happen for this particular system or this particular application like if we're able to do this do this do this and do that then we're able to get root access or whatever the case is now you might not be able to put in preventative controls or put in different things to ensure that that sort of attack path is impossible or you might be able to but you also want to have detection rules to see if someone is attempting to exploit that attack path to get let's say root access on this system for example so you can build a correlation rule with like you know python even json or even whatever, you know, rule format, your Splunk, you know, SPL, whatever the case is, and you can just 
sell it like if you know this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens or that happens like there's a lot of things you can do you know in this sequence right or maybe within a certain like cardinality right there's a lot of flexibility you have with correlation rules but you can get really really complex with correlation rules so i do like that this is sort of like a basic introduction to what correlation rules are but let's actually look at how a correlation rule is created to explain how the rule works let's consider the following event log use cases so the first use case here adversaries tend to remove the logs during post exploitation phase to remove their tracks so basically if you don't have any logs then you can't actually validate what happened within the attack now a unique event id of 104 is logged every time a user tries to remove or clear event log to create a rule based on this activity we can set the condition as follows so the rule will be if the log source is the window event log and the event id is 104 trigger and alert event log cleared right so if the log source is windows event log and the event id is 104 trigger and alert event log cleared this is a very simple use case as a matter of fact this might not even sometimes be a correlation rule this might just be a basic detection rule right but in this case in order to understand what a correlation rule is this actually does make sense next you have a use case too where adversaries use commands like who am i after the exploitation or privilege escalation phase the following fields will be helpful to include in the rule the log source which identifies the log source capturing the event logs the event id which event id is associated with the process execution activity in this case is 4688 and finally the new process name on which basically is what process name will be helpful in the rule so the rule here would be if the log source is windows event log and the event code is 4688 and the new process name contains who am i then trigger an alert who am i command execution detected now again this is somewhat of some you know you know truly basic event some truly basic correlation rules right because if you have a tool like sigma right you can already specify where you want your log source to be from right matter of fact this might just be a query right this might just be a query in some cases right because this is just like you know a very specific event right but what if you actually are trying to correlate different sources like windows event log and also say like your network logs as well right that is where you start getting into more advanced correlation use cases or let's say you're in a cloud environment and you want to correlate activities between let's say your AWS environments and your azure environment because you know that you can access your AWS environments from some azure virtual machines well that's actually where where you get some more advanced correlation use cases where you say hey if an attacker does xyz within azure and then they do xyz within aws and then xyz within aws right you can see how this logic starts getting more co complicated as you go but that's actually where like there's a lot more complexity in correlation rules now in the previous task the importance of field value pairs was discussed correlation rules keep an eye on the values of certain fields to get triggered that is the reason why it's important to have normalized logs ingested and this points back to the first question we had why sim right it's one of the main reasons why we have a sim correlation next we have alert investigation when monitoring sims analysts spend most of their time on dashboards as it displays various key details of the network in a very summarized way once an alert is triggered the events associated with the alert are examined and the rule is checked to see which conditions are met based on the investigation the analyst determines if it's a true positive or false positive and some of the actions that are performed after the analysis are one if it's a false alarm or a false positive, it may require tune-in to avoid some false positives from occurring again. So this is where you do like, you know, detection tuning to make sure like you're reducing the amount of false positives you have, but also not tune to the point where you now no longer are able to detect true positives. Secondly, you have when the alert is true positive. So this is where you're required to actually perform some further activity to understand what might have happened, the state of the compromise, and, you know, probably contact the asset owner to inquire about the activity. And if suspicious activity is confirmed isolate the infected host block suspicious ips do some remediative tasks whatever the case might be all right answer the questions here what if an id is generated when event logs are removed this is i believe 104 what type of alert may require tuning this is going to be false positives false positive i guess it's a false alarm then oh there we go all right all right that's it for this video it was getting a bit long and i don't want to continue on there so there will be a part three where we actually go into some lab work you know and actually do some investigation using the sim you know and take a look at some things we can discover and you know just query some you know events to find data and you know understand the actual purpose of a sim thanks for watching this and again if you've not watched part one i'll leave a link to it somewhere on the screen definitely go check it out and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye